Greetings to each of you in this uh, important forum on Gandhi in the 21st century. We come from different countries, cultures, religions. My greetings, my name is Mario Marazziti, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, the community of Sant'Egidio, the friends of the Gandhi Smarakanidi world, and uh, on behalf of Professor Andrea Riccardi, I send you my deepest wishes for your work and our common commitment to try to change the world by using non-violence, changing better hope. And uh, I want to take seriously uh, the very core of, our, of your initiative. Is Mahatma Gandhi's uh, thought and teaching and life uh, something over? Or is this what can save the world another time in our times? I remember when he said, uh, after the atomic bomb, there have been cataclysmic changes in the world. Do I still adhere to my faith in truth and nonviolence? Has not the atom exploded that faith? Not only has it not done so, but it has clearly demonstrated to me that the twins constitute the mightiest force in the world. If I remember well, before it, before it the atom bomb is of no effect. The two opposing forces are wholly different in kind, the one moral and spiritual, and the other physical and material. And the one, the spiritual one, is infinitely superior to the other, which by its very nature has an end. He said that when it was very difficult to imagine that. And in our times, the nuclear war, atomic bomb, incredibly more powerful than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs uh, are becoming part of the public speech as never before. And uh, war has become trendy as never before. And uh, this is why I think that we must find in that moral resistance the key to try to change again the world being better and to give up violence and to discover the beauty to live uh, together. We met uh, the first times along the path that was started by St. John Paul II in 1986 uh, with the special day of prayer and fasting in Assisi, prayer for peace. At a time in which they were speaking of uh, Star Wars, we, we still had uh, two blocks, the Soviet Union and uh, the Western world, America, uh, Ronald Reagan, and uh, the feeling of Pope uh, John Paul II was that the prayer of the Christians, even if many, was not enough. And we had to pray all together. So gathering together to pray one by the other one, each one in its own tradition, uh, asking from God the unique gift of peace, that it is the most beautiful name of God. And uh, starting from 1987, the community of Sant'Egidio took the responsibility uh, from a grassroots level and a high level to continue the spirit of Assisi because the final call was we have to become artisans of peace. We can build up, each of us is called to become and to be an artisan of, fish, of peace. This is how we met with your Hindu world, with some great souls, and uh, with the people who are organizing this uh, forum. And uh, over these years, uh, many times, this that prayer was really showing its, its effects also in an apparent way. Uh, way. 
Uh, I remember when in 1992, the civil war in Mozambique was ended by a negotiation created by the community of Sant'Egidio, promoted by it with some allies. And after 26 months of uh, talks, a war that has created in 16 years uh, one million casualties and dead, and millions of displaced people was ended. And uh, in 1989, uh, the wall, the Berlin Wall crashed, and the world had a new season of hope. But then the markets were stronger than the, the good taste of living together equal in peace and justice, and uh, creating also a soul, discovering a soul in globalization. We cannot have a globalization of economy we do, if we do not have a globalization of a, a spiritual globalization. And uh, uh, over these years, step by step, the war have become, is, has become more trendy. In this moment, uh, there are wars where it is difficult to, to say clearly what is good, what is wrong, where to stay, because they are not black and white. Even if there are responsibilities, the one who invades is always the invader. Uh, the one who starts, it is the one who starts, but there are the, the ancient reasons for the, the war, the roots. The only way to, to start defeating wars it, is to put ourselves in the, on the side of the victims. And the victims are entire peoples blackmailed by those who make war, pre, like prisoners. Uh, in uh, our point of view must be the point of view, the angle of view of the victims. And uh, this helps us to understand the absurdity of the war even when we, we have good reasons to, to complain or to accumulate uh, hatred because we suffer or our beloved ones suffered a lot. In this moment, we do not know the number of the victims of the many wars in, the war, uh, in our times. In, in Ukraine, the UN uh, says that at least 20,000 civilians were killed without any reason. But we know that uh, they may be two, three times more. And uh, then there are the military. Uh, we, uh, the United States uh, speak of 70,000 military that died on the Ukrainian side. But uh, if we look at the Gaza-Israeli war, a terrible attack on October 7th does not cancel the problem that uh, at least 20,000 civilians were lives were destroyed in Gaza over these months. And that uh, in Africa, there are wars like in Sudan that abrupted suddenly some months ago, a year ago. And we already have at least 380,000 dead and at least 25,000 uh, civilians that were killed in that conflict. I come myself uh, from Nairobi and uh, from the last session in Rome of the peace negotiation for South Sudan. Uh, it became independent 13 years ago. We had uh, that independence. There was a civil war inside Sudan to create South Sudan as an independent state for 20 years. And it is 13 years from the very first weeks after the independence that some war started again inside. They have never tasted a normal life without killing, without receiving and creating pain. So is it possible to do something in this world? It is still actual, Mahatma Gandhi's call, uh, to disarm our hearts, as Jesus taught all the Christians, uh, love your enemy. It is the toughest thing to learn and to learn how to live it. But uh, we can look in face at wars and uh, not be just part of the 
war propaganda communication. We live in an infocratic uh, society, at least in the West, but globalization is making all the world united in that. So what is narrated is very often more real, looks more real than reality. And this makes very difficult to decide what is good, what is bad, and to stay on the side of the truth that is the only true religion. This is how the world has started to be scattered and shattered, because uh, in this uh, infocratic society, the individual becomes the only certainty. And we are starting to be a world of billions of individuals instead of being a world that has a common destiny and feels the common destiny as the normality. The world has stopped to identify ourselves in the other one. Only in this way we can make war. Because you cannot destroy yourself if you look at yourself in the eyes of the other one. And uh, this is why at Santa Gidio we think we have to work together, all religions, all people of good faith, of people of uh, goodwill, to re-identify ourselves in the other one, to create from many, many I, step by step, a we. It is the we that can save the world. We must recreate the sense of community in our communities because it is the only way in which the other one still remain my brother, my sister, my friend, and not, and not a possible enemy. And at the end of the day, somebody that is a competitor that can take something away from me and I can kill. I am uh, one of the co-founders of the World Coalition Against the Death Penalty. Uh, I, uh, for years, I heard those who support the death penalty saying, only when you eliminate, when you execute, when you destroy the life of the, of the killer, of the bad person, then, then there will be closure there will be some justice, some new balance in the world. But I met the father of a woman that had been killed uh, during the Oklahoma bombing in uh, the United States when, where uh, um, a building, of, a state building was destroyed and more than 100 people died in that uh, attack. Uh, the father had lost a beautiful young woman that was helping uh, foreigners, was helping refugees, doing a good job, was a good woman, was a good girl. And the killer was a former Marine that had decided that he wanted to recreate justice because the state, in his opinion, had done something wrong and he killed, destroyed the lives of many. So one father was hating the killers uh, but then saw on television the father of the killer that was really in pain because he was asking himself where and what and when I was wrong. I tried to, to raise a good person, a good boy. He was a good boy. He was a good military, a good soldier in the military. And now what happened? So he was destroyed by the feeling of... Uh, remorse, uh, sen sense of fault. And he recognized the same pain. Then he went to visit that father. They had each other and they started to cry. And they together uh, reinforced the movement of murders, victims, families for reconciliation. Because only reconciliation, only forgiveness can heal the world. And uh, this is uh, valid at a personal level and at a state level. We are not longing for 
no words. We have to recreate a united world that, where our new generation can taste the taste of living together in peace, building up what is necessary to everyone in a planet that we, our generation, are living in a really bad state to them. So we can start the disarmament of hearts and uh, starting from ourselves. This can be a key to keep changing the world, even if maybe it is not tomorrow. It is, was the great wisdom of Mahatma Gandhi that could see what was looking as impossible. And uh, so let's start to disarm our hearts. Let's build peace inside us and millions will receive it in a mysterious but real way around us. Thank you. From Rome, from Sant'Egidio.